What is up guys? Welcome back to the iOS development channel. My name is Max and this is Max Codes. Now in this video, what we're going to be creating is this little locations app where we have a segmented control between two different places and as many places as you really want to add in here, right? And then we're also going to be integrating MapKit, of course, with CL location coordinates to kind of set the place. And it's going to be a really quick, uh, fun tutorial that I think you're really going to learn and gain some value from. All right. So before we get started, here's a list of the concepts we're going to be using in this video. We're first going to be using UI view representable. Well, not first, these aren't in order necessarily, but we're going to be using UI view representable CL location coordinate 2d MK map view within map kit and MK coordinate span, MK coordinate region. We're going to be using state in Swift UI. So at state with a capital S, we're going to be using stacks. So H stacks, V stacks. Uh, we're not going to be using Z stacks, but we're going to be using stacks. All right. Segmented control, very obviously, and uh, navigation view. So we can get this title up here with navigation bar title with the large titles in Swift UI. Okay, so let me go ahead and drag that to the side and let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. And I'm just gonna call this a single view app. I'm gonna make sure you use Swift UI is selected. I'm, I'm gonna call this Swift UI map kit segmented control or something along those lines. All right, now that, well that's generating, I'm just gonna hit create. Be sure to check out my other YouTube channel, uh, which is actually on my YouTube channel, this channel, it's on the side under the featured channels. So while we're getting this set up, while I'm waiting for you to get your project open, let me just pull that up and show you where you can get to that channel, okay? So bam, bam, here it is. Okay, so you'll see if you go to youtube.com slash max codes, on the right here under top dogs, you can see Max Nelson. Go ahead and click that and go to videos and I uploaded a video 24 hours ago, no, 19 hours ago called, should I learn web development or iOS development? Now I really encourage you to watch this. I want to grow this channel and I think that I can provide value to you from watching these videos, right? I think these videos will be good for you. Okay. So now that that's out of the way, I'll put a link in the description for that as well, but let's jump right into the code in building today's video. Okay, so locations. Let's start off by giving a large navigation title to our application so that we can get that locations up there, okay? What I'm gonna do is just say navigation view. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to put in like some sort of V stack in here to kind of allow us to apply that title. So what we'll do is we'll say V stack and we'll just say on the V stack dot navigation bar title. And don't ask me why I would think that you'd apply it to the navigation view, but, uh, we don't. So navigation bar title. And then in here, we just pass in some text. So we'll say text and locations. You probably already have the hang of this. If you've been watching my Swift UI videos on my channel. Uh, but yeah, in the view stack, it's giving us an error because we don't have any content. So let's go ahead and say text and we'll just say content. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the iPhone XR simulator here in Xcode 11 beta, and I'm going to recompile the application and make sure that we can see it here on the screen. Feel free to use the live preview if you're running Catalina. I'm just gonna be using the XR simulator. Okay, perfect. And since we are using the XR simulator, you could probably get rid of this previews here, this whole set of code down here. So feel free to get rid of that. And uh, let's recompile, just make sure everything is running. But again, if you're using the editor in Canvas, the live kind of preview updater, you're gonna to want to have this code right here. Okay, perfect. So we're off to a good start. Let's go ahead and throw in some more content, okay? What I wanna do is put in an H stack so that we can kind of have our, our uh, segmented control here and display it horizontally, right? Each one of these is a text within a, or each one of these is a segmented control with text within it. And it's going to be in a H stack. Okay. Now the V stack is here so that we can put the segmented controls up top and then we can put the map view below it. Okay. So the map view would go here and then right here would be the segmented controls. 
Okay, so let's write out the segmented controls by saying H stack so that it's horizontal. Notice how Utah and California are horizontal to each other. And then in here, we're just going to say segmented control. And the selection is going to take in a state binding. Okay, now this state binding is going to have to be created by us above our struct here or above our view. So what we'll do is we'll just say selected segment. Let me close that off. And what we're going to do is we're going to go below our struct here. And I'm going to say at state private var selected segment. And if you've gone through my Swift UI videos, you probably noticed that this is very similar to the one I did on the WebKit video, right? There's a video, I'll link it at the end of this video, like in the suggested video at, on the screen of the video at the end. And it's the same exact thing, except for instead of MapKit, it's with WebKit. So it's kind of interesting. So you can display websites. Okay, so we have our selected segment. Now, what do we want in the content? Well, let's hit return. And in this content, we want to for each over a list of data. So let's go ahead and describe a list of data by saying at state private var locations is equal to an array. And this array is going to contain two location items. Now, what do we need in our location items? Well, we need a title, so Utah or California, and then we need a set of coordinates to display on the map. How do we do that? Well, we can define a struct above our content view here by saying struct location item. And we're going to make this equal to a var of title with a string value and a var of coordinates with a value of CL location coordinate 2D. And you'll see it doesn't populate and that's because we have an imported map kit. So let's go ahead and say import. I don't, I didn't think you need map kit in here. Maybe it's just not populating. Let's import, if I could type map kit, and then now let's go to coordinates here and say CL location coordinate 2D. Okay, I'm gonna command click into CL location coordinate 2D and hit show quick help. And I'm gonna hit open in developer documentation just because I'm curious to see if this is like part of map kit. I would think it's part of like core location, but then you don't have to like import that. And uh, yeah, it's part of core location, but huh, whatever. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so let's define our two location objects. I'm gonna say location item, and we're gonna pass in that title and coordinates. And if I'm going a bit too fast, just watch the video, follow along as fast as you can. And then if you get stuck at any point, just pause the video, maybe go back 30 seconds, maybe turn it on half the speed. There's a lot to do, but I wanna keep these videos short for those of you that are are pretty quick at developing and uh, are used to that style in my videos. Okay, so we're gonna hit tab and for coordinates, we're gonna say CL location coordinate 2D. Now, what we're gonna do is choose the latitude longitude. And what I'm gonna do is say 40.7608. And for the longitude, I'm gonna say negative 111.8910. Okay, now that's Utah, okay, Salt Lake City. Now, how did I get that number? Well, pretty simply, I pulled up a tab in Google and I typed in SLC and then coordinates. So you can put whatever map you want, whatever place you want, just go ahead and find some coordinates. And you'll notice that I put negative for the West one. I'm not entirely sure how coordinates work, but for West, just put a negative value or it's gonna be somewhere across the world, okay? So for this second one, if it says West, just put a negative value. If it says West, put a negative value. If it says North, just leave it positive. Okay, now if you don't care to put in custom coordinates, just put in the exact coordinates I'm putting in. I'm gonna copy this now. Make sure you put a comma after that, uh, after that first one. And what I'm gonna do is change this to negative 122.4194, and then I'm gonna say 37.7749. Okay, that's California, San Francisco, I believe. So I'm gonna say San Francisco. I think I spelled that right. San Francisco. I guess we could put California because I put Utah, not Salt Lake City. Okay. Or you could even put Cali, but then that might be Columbia. You never know. All right. So California and Utah, we're good there. Okay. So now what we need to do is we just need to kind of for each over this and display it here within our body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for each and I'm going to for each from zero to 
locations.count. So it's gonna iterate over our locations and that's gonna go twice since we have two items. Pretty simple stuff, basic programming. And then for the item, I'm gonna put in some text and I'm just gonna say self.locations at dollar sign zero dot title. And then I'm gonna tag it similar to what you might do in React with keys, okay? If this doesn't make too much sense, go ahead and search my channel for videos on state. Not sure if I have a video explaining this in depth, but if I do, it's uh, gonna help you out there, okay? Okay, so we're good there. Now we haven't compiled in a bit, so let's go ahead and compile, and we should be able to see our segmented control with two locations, okay? No map kit, however. Okay, perfect, that looks great. But how do we get the map kit in there? And that's where UI view representable comes in and a separate struct. Okay, so what we're gonna do is below here on line 42-ish, we're gonna say struct map view. And this is gonna be of type UI view representable, a view that represents a UI kit view. So this is really how you combine UI kit with Swift UI. Now we want one default property that we need to pass into map view by default. That's gonna be coordinates, okay? And this is gonna be of type CL location coordinate 2D. So as you can see, there's a pattern emerging. We're for eaching and we're passing in one kind of piece of data. Now, the way we're gonna be using map view is a lot simpler because we're using state to keep track of the selected segment, which means we don't need a for each over anything because we're only gonna be displaying one map at a time, right? So we only need to call it once and pass in the selected coordinates. And by using segmented control, whenever we click on it, and even in our app right now, I'm trying to switch over to our app. Okay, just assume we're in our app without the map view, right? It's selecting the segment at the point we're at. Now all we need to do is pass that in the location by saying something like self.locations at selected segment, right? And then dot coordinates. Okay, so I'm gonna comment that out, but that's basically how we get the selected coordinates. So if I were to cut that out and say text and pass that in here, we're basically going to see the coordinates that are selected. So let me comment out the map view and let's just kind of look at that right now. All right, initializer requires conforms to string protocol. So maybe what we can do is use string interpolation. So I'm gonna say it's a string and you don't have to follow along at this point because I'm gonna eventually delete this line of code. But if you wanna see it on the screen, do that and compile it. All right, uh, let's say dot coordinates and we'll say dot latitude, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll copy this and I will put a space here and put another set of string interpolation and I'll do that. Kind of a big long line. Let me kind of expand it so you can see that a bit better. Okay, so that's what I did and that's basically gonna allow us to, why did it flip me over? I'll recompile it so the iPhone will just automatically go over there. Okay, you'll see when I select California and Utah, it displays the correct coordinates. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that just so I can put it in the in the uh, thumbnail, okay? So we don't really need that, right? Because we don't want to display that. We wanna pass it into our UI view representable here. So what we're gonna do is leave that there because we're gonna copy it. And then what we're gonna do is conform to UI view representable right now and display a map view in this UI view representable that combines UI kit with Swift UI. So we're gonna say func make UI view and this function looks a little bit big, right? What we wanna do is get rid of this and we wanna return an MK map view type. So an embeddable map interface similar to the one provided by the maps application. And then for the parameters, we can just say context and it can be of type context. And then now all we have to do is say MK map view and pass in a frame of zero since we are using Swift UI. And Swift UI kind of auto generates our user interface and fills it in. And I'll make a video on auto layout constraints in Swift UI and explain why that can't be done. Because a lot of you seem to have that question. But yeah, you can't use auto layout or frames within Swift UI. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and implement one last function. It's gonna be called update view. 
And we're gonna kind of do the same thing here. I'm gonna simplify this parameter here by just saying context. And we're just going to create a span and a coordinate region. Now, what is a span? It's an MK coordinate span. And that's so that we can display by default how far we are out from the map, okay? So right now it's at 0.2, but if I were to zoom out, that would be something like 0.5 this would be something like one, okay? So that doesn't make a bunch of sense right now, but as we type it, you'll gain an understanding of it. So let's say let span is equal to MK coordinate span. It says the width and height of a map region. And we're gonna pass in the latitude delta and the longitude delta. We're just gonna put in 0.2 for both of these, and we'll mess around with the values in a bit to kind of show you how that differs. Okay, now we'll say let region, and we'll say, We'll define an MK coordinate region. And this is so we can actually display what's on the map view, right? That's how we put the coordinates into our map. So we're gonna pass in our center, which is gonna be our location, which is our coordinates, which is up here. And then for the span, we're gonna pass in the span. Okay, so it's saying pass in the coordinates, so California coordinates, and how close or how far we are from the map. If it was 0.1, it would be zoomed in more. If it was 0.5, it would be zoomed in further. If it was one, it would be even further. Okay. Okay. So now all we need to do is set the region on the view and we now have our map view. So we'll say view dot set region. And uh, we'll pass in region and we'll say animated is true. I was waiting for that auto complete, but it wasn't popping up. Oh, well, the reason is because this is says, saying UI view right here. Let's rename this parameter to view. Okay. All right. So now this isn't gonna do anything straight off the bat because we haven't really used it inside of our content view here. So let's go ahead and let's take out the self.locations at selected segment.coordinates, copy that. And then now all we need to do is say map view. Since that's what we call this, you could call this ASDF, but then you'd have to say ASDF there. Hope you're catching my drift. And you'll see it takes in a coordinate because we have that variable there, okay? So let's pass in the coordinates by pasting locations at selected segment dot coordinates. We shouldn't need that self. Okay, so get that line in there. And then by default, selected segment is zero, right? And zero inside of our locations is gonna be Utah here. So when we first boot up our application, it's gonna display Utah on the map. And then when we select California, it's gonna switch the segment to one and display California on the map. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile our application, boot that up. And you'll see now when we select California, it brings us all the way to California and we select Utah, it brings us back to Utah. Now I said we'd mess around with MK coordinate span. So let's go ahead and just change this to 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 and you'll see it's just zoomed out more. Okay. And then while that's compiling, I'm just going to change it to two and two. Okay. You'll see it's zoomed out more. Now let's go ahead and compile it and it should be zoomed out even more. You might even be able to see the whole state of Utah. Okay, so it's zoomed out even more. Well, it looks like one's probably the, the biggest value, right? It's on a scale of zero to one. So let's change this back to 0 0.25 or something and 0 0.25 and it should be zoomed in, but zoomed out pretty good to the point that we can see it in a really good light. Okay, so that looks great. And you've now built a Swift UI application with MapKit and you've combined UI kit with Swift UI using UI view representable. And you've learned a lot about some of the concepts in Swift UI, such as CL location coordinate 2D. Well, I guess that's map kit, but you've learned things like UI view representable. You've learned a bit about navigation bar titles, stacks, segmented controls, how to iterate over data and how do you state and how to really combine this all together to build a small but functional application really quickly in about 57 lines of code. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And uh, I really appreciate the support. And if you're interested, again, go ahead and watch my vlog on my other channel, Max Nelson, which is linked in the description as well. And uh, I'll see you in the very next video tomorrow morning. Catch you later.